G'day mates, Argzy here. Welcome back to Western Australia. Now as you would have seen from that uh, extended montage time-lapse introduction, we finished all the planting using the world's largest planter over in the field we were working on in the last episode. So the uh, big bud has done a power of work over there and that is all finished. So great to see the back of that field. Which brings us to a new morning and a new task, which is here in front of us, the canola field looking nice and golden and ready to get harvested so we are going to jump straight into that and if i just find my way back down to the ground there we go we'll turn around here and we are going to be using some swathers so here we've got the uh, honeybee swathing heaters on front we've got the macdon m1170 times three and we're going to set these up to run around and swath the canola and then we have some uh, combines with some pickup heads which will run around behind them and take care of picking up all the grain and uh, threshing the grain now I have done a little bit of research this is a common practice in Australia from what I can gather now as, as I understand it the reason for doing that is if the crop uh, won't quite dry out on its own standing or uh, instead of using a herbicide to stop the crop from growing and forcing it to dry out which I guess this would be seen as a little bit more of a uh, friendly way to do it one less chemical put on the crop however I suppose uh, it might be a little bit more labour intensive because of the width and uh, coverage that these can provide compared to say a spraying rig or something like that but anyhow, I thought it was worth giving it a go and seeing how it all works. Now, I'm using a mod called Crop Extension. This was originally made by Thundar. 
And we've uh, had a bit of a theme of Thunder's mods lately with the Rocky Fields one we were using in No Creek Farms as well. well this one's been out for a wee while. Uh, I'm, if I recall correctly, I feel it came packaged with uh, these swathers and uh, the like. Although I may have found a, uh, a package that came with it all together with that mod installed as well, or as part of the package. So I'll see if I can find a link to where that was, and if I do, I will add it into the description of the video. So what we need to do, so we've just uh, unfolded the header there. And if we get things turned on, I am going to use course play. Obviously we've got three machines. If we just start running in here, you'll see that we are dropping a swath of... Uh, canola there behind us. We hop out and have a look at it. Slightly different colour to the straw, it's got a little bit more of a green tinge to it. So that is the uh, canola swath. Now we're going to jump in here and we will set up our course play to have all three of these running around together and the important reason for setting up the course play is because we will use exactly the same course for our combines so they run along and pick up the swath which is being dropped here in the centre. So we'll bring up course play here and get started on that. So in here we've got field 6 which is the one we've defined before. We are just going to do, I think we'll just do the single headland pass. Uh, we're going to start on headland passes. Multiple tools is obviously the critical one here. We have three tools. And I've set to 14.4 meters which is the auto width for them. Obviously you don't need the seeded usage, seed usage calculator. So I think from there we should Fingers crossed this will form the course along the road boundary here, which is where the other combines have uh, gone from. But if we just hit generate, we'll give it a uh, little bit of time to process this and see where it ends up. Alright, and there you see it hasn't quite, uh, hasn't quite done the course that we would have hoped for. It's uh, doing it a little bit of an odd angle. So we will try again, and what I will do is I know that we set this to, I believe from memory 80 and that might have generated the course last time so my memory wasn't too far off uh, I'm a little bit happy with that course we're starting on this edge we can see the uh, little red icon up there for the finish uh, which means once we've gone around the headlands we'll have some up and down rows here to do looks like there's a couple of little awkward ones there but uh, I'm sure the swathers will figure that out and it shouldn't be any problems for our combines so we will go back in here and we're going to save this. We call it Field Six Swathers. Swather. And so there we've got that magic done. Now we need to tell this to run in the left-hand lane. Uh, we don't, I believe, have to change anything else. I think we should be all good. Now I'm just going to bump the turn speed up a little bit. I know that the field edges on these aren't uh, the smoothest, so it might try and turn quite a lot. I do know the turning circle is quite tight. Uh, so that's us there. So I think if we set this going on drive course at nearest waypoint We should with some success get underway I seem to recall I had that problem last time where when I said go it just took off without actually Cutting the uh, canola. I have tested this out and it worked We'll just tell this to go again and uh, see if that's fixed it to keep the header down this time. There we go. Alright, so you go. We can see that it's got that little bit of a wobble going on, which uh, we hit the speed. I might just turn the speed down just a touch on them, just so it doesn't get into a uh, frenzy trying to turn all the time. Alright, there we go. So that seems to be working exactly as we would have expected leaving a nice swath there of uh, canola ready to be picked up by the combines and their headers so I think we will go and jump into the other two swathers and get them started and uh, then we'll set to uh, watching how the progress is let them get some of the field cut and opened up before we bring the combines in so that is all three swathers up and running see number two there just in front of us and uh, we're sitting here in the third one now I have set them up on convoy mode, uh, I think I set it to about 35 meters behind. So it'll be interesting to see how that all goes once, uh, or if they get caught up, which they should because these uh, these two 
technically cover less ground because they're on the inside, have the uh, slightly shorter distance to cover. But uh, so far everything seems to be working as I'd expect. We see the uh, little difficulties here having a almost similar to a uh, pivot tractor or a centre pivot tractor that uh, they want to sort of stop and turn all the time. In fact I think we'll just bump the turn speed up on this one just a touch and see if that helps. But uh, other than that we're getting some nice swaths there behind us and uh, once we get on the up and down rows when it's straight we certainly won't have the uh, same sort of difficulties we're having right now. So we, uh, I think the best thing, we've just had a little bit of a time lapse with the uh, big butt but I'll put this onto a little bit more of a time lapse and at least wait for one lap of the field and possibly then for them to get a little bit ahead of the combines obviously they're going to run a lot faster than the combines but uh, I'm just a bit concerned how the grain carts when we get all those set up might run once we have the combines in here so uh, we'll let these keep going get a little bit opened up and then get into the actual harvesting and in hindsight and just following along here for a few minutes uh, I realised that a time lapse with this turning is going to be pretty difficult to watch. So instead, I'm going to piece together a little bit of a montage of these guys uh, underway getting the harvest started or getting the swathing started. Might just be a little bit easier to watch than a uh, what would seem like a crazed possessed swather with all the turning and uh, stop start that's happening. So we'll jump straight into that. We've just finished our first headland pass and I came to the realisation that we hadn't set up islands on our course. I'm just going to go through here and set up a new course and hopefully we'll save that as a different one. Hopefully we can uh, get things to align as they were if we use all the same settings. Uh, if not we will be able to still run the combines around on the headland pass we've got and then change the course for the combines and we get to that over to this new course. So oversight on my part, um, but certainly worth fixing now before we get started on those up and down passes and uh, hopefully we won't have too many issues. So we'll uh, see how this turns out. All right, so there's our course. Looks pretty similar to what we had. So I'll uh, go back and save that. But just before I do that, I'm probably gonna have to stop these other two coming along here. We're gonna have uh, all sorts of issues. I've just named that course F6 Swather Islands so we can remember the difference. Now what I'm hoping is if I come over here to where we just finished our headland pass and set the swather to go on nearest waypoint or next closest waypoint that it will pretend to finish off what it's just done and then pick up the next course that we want it to which will be doing the up and down rows. There we go, we've hit drive course and that's looking like it's following that swath pretty accurately which is good. Good to see, bodes well for uh, our test and experiment not failing. We'll just watch here, hopefully they'll go and pick up the up and down rows in just a minute. So there we go, this lead swath has come all the way down here and is starting to uh, cut out this piece up here. Obviously the way the course was set up uh, they had to come up here and do this little piece just because it wasn't quite parallel so they'll start off here they'll get a nice straight edge and that should set us up pretty well for uh, getting going on these up and down rows so we've set the course up for the other two swathers so we'll just go and make sure that they get uh, turned around and start heading back down this way well after a little bit of mucking around to get the 
field opened up uh, having to do a couple of little passes there along the other side we are finally into it proper now having a quick look at the course it looked to me like they will go and do an up and a down pass between here and the road get that bit opened up properly and then we'll come back and start working our way across the field so it's good to be at this stage if I just have a quick look there we've got just under two hours of work to get this field uh, completely chopped and swathed so uh, plenty of time to get the combines in here and get them started I suppose that gives the swath uh, we were playing with some sense of realism a little bit more time to dry out because uh, I think normally you wouldn't just be chopping them and picking them up but today that is what we are going to do so we'll uh, carry on with our little montage I know the first one wasn't that uh, good or I don't expect it was going to be that neat to watch uh, it was very difficult to get some good images with the swathers uh, twisting and turning all over the place so we'll pick up a few more shots now we'll go into a little bit more of a montage and then we'll go and get the combines up and going We've left the swathers running in the field they are doing a decent job now we've got them up and running and we're over here in the yard looking at our latest combines I think this is about the only brand or one of the few brands I don't think we've had a Massey or a uh, Rostel Marsh on the farm yet but of a lot of the main brands I think New Holland might be one of the last few we haven't used so here we've got three of the uh, CR 1090s and on the front we've got these Macdon, I think they're a PW8 pickup header. Now these are designed to pick up the swaths and then thresh the uh, thresh the grain or thresh the seed out of the canola like a normal uh, combine does, obviously. So, but we're obviously only picking up the width of the swath, which is only sort of as wide as the uh, header there. So I will go and get these all over to the field. We will get them set up running uh, on the same course as the swathers. And then out the back, uh, we've added a couple of Fent 1100s here. These beautiful 3D tracks on them. And we've also got a couple of different grain carts, a uh, Brent Avalanche here, the 1596, running on the uh, dual axle rather than a tracked cart. So we're, uh, we're going to get those set up. 
Now, for our trucks, I'm not going to bother with a mother bin. I think our experiment with the oat field uh, from a couple of episodes ago showed that it was actually easier to dump from the grain carts straight into the trucks and we could overlap courses and get a better result with uh, filling and carrying on. So what I think I might do is much the same. We'll come in and we'll use the grain complex here, the silo complex we've got to store our canola. So we'll bring the two Mac trucks back down here and use their truck and trailer setup. Uh, we should be able to use a lot of the same auto drive courses we've set up previously in this field with uh, just a bit of a tweak to probably the truck course because obviously the grain carts were dumping into the mother bin and the trucks were taking out of the mother bin so we will tweak that and uh, get that up and going so we've got the three combines over here and we've already set them up on the courses but just very quickly we've got them on the field work option uh, we've loaded course F6 Swatha Islands and as you said this one to left the other one to centre and the furthest one to right and the other setting we turned off was harvest straw discharge so with that in mind I think we're all good to go I was thinking about putting vehicle convoy on but realised there's actually no point holding the each combine up because uh, with the header width they're never actually going to well shouldn't actually have any collision issues so I've decided we will leave the convoy mode off and avoid the issues there so if we just start this from next closest waypoint it should uh, carry on from where we are here we go, we've dropped the header down and I've started going so we'll just uh, tab through the other two combines and get them on their merry way then it'll be time to go and bring the two grain carts over and get ready to start uh, some unloads so we've got the first cart here in the field if I bring up the auto drive and just bring up the edit option you'll see we've still got our F6 cart unload F6 cart weight courses set up and there's our truck course. Now the truck course is the one we're going to pull across to unload the carts into. But for now, we'll just turn that back off. We want to go through and select our combine. There we go, unload combine. Now obviously we have our weight point and our F6 cart unload. So we should now just be able to tell that to drive and go and find those courses and hopefully go and find those combines I've already set them up with the F6 cart weight in their auto drive uh, so we'll just have to wait and see how this combine go uh, this cart goes and we will go and get the other one set up and get the trucks back down here as well so we can get them all running there we go he has found a course and it says to drive to combine pipe auto drive is getting us down here to get these combines unloaded obviously all three of them are in need of an offload and I don't actually think this grain cart will have the capacity uh, but like I said earlier without having convoy mode on and without having to worry about clashes with headers or anything like that we're uh, going to be able to carry keep these combines going just a little bit more efficiently than we have previously so we'll leave this grain cart here to get this uh, combine unloaded and we'll go and get the other one set up and running as well and then it'll be time for the trucks like I said we've already moved on here and getting the second combine unloaded these uh, combines must have a decent unload speed actually and it does look like we will have enough capacity in the grain cart to at least get some of the other combine emptied out not going to be all of it uh, but at least it'll allow it to get started moving again and hopefully by that time the other grain cart will be ready to run over here and start unloading we've just skipped forward a little bit I didn't show you the wagon getting back over to the yard um, if you recall last time we were in this field we had some issues with the way the yard juts out what I've actually done is I've moved the cart weight point to actually use what I called center exit and that was a point I put out right on the end sort of between the grain bins and the sheds and hoping that they will head back to that point when they want to go and offload into the trucks so we've just been around here the both carts the other ones down in the distance somewhere you can't quite see it from here it's down uh, behind that combine we can see coming parked up down there so both carts are over here we've got all the combines up and going uh, we still 
have the wind rowers. I need all the swathers, sorry. We need to go and fire them up again. I have uh, just reloaded the game after a bit of a break. And I need to get them going again as well. But things seem to have been set up and running pretty smoothly now. Like I've said plenty of times, there is always a little bit of teething at the start of setting this up with these huge fields. But, you know, we're only, it was only the second time I've unloaded the combines. And we're only just a sort of not even a halfway around this field. And I'm, um, fingers crossed, have things working pretty well. So we'll go over and fire up the swathers. And we'll uh, come back and follow the cart. See if it goes and gets filled up once one of these combines is full. And then makes its way back over to the trucks. The cart here has managed to find its way all the way down the end of the field. And looks like it's actually going to drive along here and offload on the move which isn't quite what we wanted it to do we wanted it to go and empty that combine up the front out but uh this is just a good example of the latest version of auto drive allowing unloading on the move so this will uh well, it's going to top our com uh, top our grain cart up there there we go 100 percent so we'll just uh, see how they go with negotiating a course back to the farm you can see our other grain cart is running down uh, the edge over there hopefully they'll pick up the other combine which you can see there as well which is also full we might just go over and have a look to see what they're doing so this is one of the problems with auto drive it's going to the combine is right around there which was the first one to be full and needing an unload now Obviously common sense would dictate that that combine we've just driven past should have been the first one to unload. Now I could probably change the settings, I think possibly the course place settings where you can specify to either unfill, unload combine by distance or by fill level. I think I've probably got it set to fill level. If it was on distance, perhaps it would have been that one there that got called to first. I'm um, not too sure. But at least we can see that the other grain cart there seems to be moving forward following the combine down until I guess it's found a route that it can avoid the fruit and not drive on the crop and we'll uh, catch up to here and get this combine emptied and get them all moving again. There we go, we've caught up to this combine and we'll get them emptied out which is good and we can see our other combine there is running down the field now I suppose the beauty of having done the crop this way is the grain carts, as far as I'm concerned, this is all harvested, even though there is the canola on the ground there which we're picking up, they will just run over those swaths with uh, no regard for that. So I guess that's uh, you know, not something you probably normally do, you'd be avoiding those if you were a grain cart driver, but it does just simplify some of that for auto drive in this instance. And so we're here with the first grain cart finding its way back down towards our auto drive course for unloading. Now if I just bring up the course for uh, the editor for auto drive, you can see there is our field 6 center exit which is what we've specified now as the weight point for the combines. So you can see the loop, they'll come out and uh, turn around and head back. So what we should do Bring that back off. We should pick this course up and head around to the trunks which are waiting to be unloaded into. So I've moved the auto drive course for the trucks over so it is now closer to the grain carts. Obviously we're not having a mother bin in the middle like we've used previously. However the one thing I hadn't factored in is we're probably going to find that this grain cart is going to dump into the back truck first. Uh, just the way it is it'll come across the trigger to empty into that rear trailer which will mean that that truck won't be able to head and dump at the silos until the front truck's full. So a little bit of an inconvenience. Fortunately we are very close to the bins so I don't think we'll have a problem where we will get caught out with having nothing to dump into, no trucks available or anything like that for uh, an extended period. We'll just wait and see what happens here as we get towards the trailers and the trigger points. And yeah, as I, as I suspected, offloading into that back trailer so how could I avoid that we would have to change the course around so that the trucks were going in the opposite direction they came into the field turned around and were pointing out 
and then as the grain carts arrived they would be loading into the lead truck much the same way as we had the course set up in the oat field uh, that we've just replanted so we'll just uh, leave this one to get emptied out and we might go and see where the other grain cart is it should I expect to be on its way back down here now but we'll just go tab across to that and have a look here we go it looks like this grain cart has just emptied out the trailing combine which is actually our lead combine and is now heading to the unload point uh, looks like it is going to run the whole way down the end of the field head over to where the swathers are operating at the moment to find some open ground and then head on down so it has done its job in terms of getting here and getting the combines emptied out and getting them moving uh, it's purely just the capacity at the moment that we have a combine waiting to be unloaded but I'm sure as soon as that other grain cart is emptied out down at the trucks it will find its way down here as well so this grain cart is now empty looks like we've got about a three quarters of a load in that truck the trailer's full and uh, the truck had a wee bit of canola in it so I've now folded everything up and we'll follow our course over to find the field exit point we had in auto drive and we'll then fingers crossed head down to find combine number two to unload but it all should be a little bit more straightforward now that the field has opened up the combines aren't sort of stuck up here and around the corner hiding from the auger wagons and obviously they will start following the same course that the or keep following the same course that the swathers are doing which will mean that they'll start working on the side closest to the trucks at the moment so uh, we'll work our way across which will help with being more efficient with the unloading and interestingly enough it looks like this other cart here is using the auto drive course I had put on the road here so I will make the broad assumption that they will follow this down head back down the road and enter the field back through the main gate so probably not the straightest route the quickest route but certainly uh, from an efficiency point of view in terms of avoiding crop and not driving through a field would probably actually work out to be the faster course so uh, interesting to see that that has worked that way and to continue the jumping around between grain carts this one is heading down to get the rear of these two combines unloaded looks like the uh, first combine which is the outer one which would be up on the left somewhere is also going to need some emptying so we'll get these taken care of and there we go down here with the second combine which was the first one to be full getting them unloaded so with the order we should after here turn around and head back down to the combine back behind us for picking up what we can out of the one which is uh, furthest ahead as we leave the red cart behind doing its duties down the far end of the field the green cart has made it down to the field entrance and is coming in from a slightly different angle to line up here with the trucks so once they have got into a position we should see the red truck being full uh, which takes me back to the point I was raising earlier and should make a start on loading that front truck as well there's that truck full and what have we got about 600 bushels left in this one so I'm guessing we'll move forward and there we go start filling up the trailer the other option would be to just have a single truck running this course uh, for the emptying I'm pretty sure it would be able to handle it uh, it's not a long distance to go like I said before and the rate the combines are filling up isn't overly excessive but uh, we'll just leave it set up like it is for now I, if we can do it with a single truck then two trucks is going to be just as efficient there's the cart empty and off on their way to go and find some more combines to offload it's handy because I believe these two we can see coming down the side will be the first two to be completely full uh, which will be in a good position to get this done a little bit faster and there is the red grain cart full and backing out of the way to allow the combine to carry on now I think they are programmed to reverse out of the way like that because normally there would be a header in the way we see with the swath pickups we have on these combines we don't have that issue 
But we're now in a position where this driver should find their way down to the trucks to get offloaded. And uh, fingers crossed, we are going to see this run pretty smoothly from here on in. I think we will take you on a little bit more of a montage of this harvest and uh, catch up with you a little bit later on once a little bit more of the work has been done. So things are going pretty well. We've uh, been going for a bit over an hour, an hour and a half, which I'm going to show you soon in a time lapse. Uh, but I think we're probably about a third of the way over the field. You can see there uh, we passed our first power pile on, and we've got at least two or three more to go. Uh, the swathers are still over there. They are pretty close to finished, um, but we're going to get that finished off in the next episode. It's been a lot of fun doing something a little bit different, a different style of harvesting, something I, ha I haven't done before, and I haven't seen done too many times on Farming Simulator, so uh, it's uh, been fun to bring that to you. We've got plenty lined up for the next episode. We're going to have to get into uh, some pretty serious planting and tillage, and probably get all the other combines. 
warmed up and working in a couple of other fields on some of that wheat and oats and barley or whatever it is we've got scattered around and uh, get those moving so thank you again all very much for watching as always i hope you've enjoyed that and i will catch you in the next one